Welcome to Rowan College of Burlington County's Baroness Podcast. I'm Dr. Brooke Myatt, Program Chair and Assistant Professor of our Entertainment Technologies Department. I'm the co-chair of the Women's Advocacy Group, a subcommittee of the President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. This monthly series highlights women in leadership while encouraging listeners to build their skills, connect with the community, and visualize the opportunities available to women in various professions. Tune in for a female perspective on the Burlington County. We are here to listen to these amazing women. And if you wanna hear from women who lead and inspire, This podcast is for you. We are joined today by Sharon Suber, the American Association University Women's State President, and she was also the Vice President. She has been a member of the AAUW for 24 years. She is also the President of the Burlington County Branch, a member of the League of Women Voters in Burlington County. She also serves on that leadership team. She is a member of the NAACP. She chairs the Political Action Committee for the Greater Delaware Valley Branch of Burlington County. She is a board member of INFACT and I can go on and on. You're a retired school uh, technology coordinator and an owner of S3 Media Design. You're wearing so many hats, Sharon. I'm so thankful that you're here joining us today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You know, when I first was told you should, you have to contact Sharon, she's your person to connect with. And then they said, oh yeah, she's, she's the AAUW. And I was like, well, what is the AAUW? So for all of our listeners out there, Tell us what the AAUW is. The American Association for University Women, who's been around for 142 years. Wow, I wouldn't have thought that. So originally when it was started, it was started by professors that were at colleges, women who were at colleges realized there were not enough women in those leadership roles. And so they set out to create more women in college coming to college, and more women in those leadership roles in college. As we have evolved through the years, we are now an organization advancing gender equity for women and girls through research, education, and advocacy. We were one of the first groups that did a research paper on women who go to college do not become some other kind of animal that then cannot be mothers. So we we did a lot of research Um, on women who get college degrees, women who go to college, women who have careers, don't then become something else. And that was a big push that people were always pushing. So we were always advocating for women in careers. We were always advocating for women with college degrees and with advanced degrees and definitely in leadership positions across the board, not just in colleges, but in industry also. Um, we're a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization, and we have about a 1,700, no, 170,000 members that across the United States, we have about a thousand branches and we have 900 colleges and universities that partner with us in New Jersey. We have a thousand members. We have, um, nine colleges that are partners with this. So that does not mean we only partner with those colleges. Those are the colleges that actually have partnered with us. We have colleges on all our branches. We have 18 branches, and many of the branches um, partner with colleges. We are a partner with with this RCBC. Yes. Okay, and we do a lot of things here at the college. One of the things that we do is we provide scholarships to women, Okay. who are going on in their career. We are looking for non-traditional women who are coming back into college, the work, okay. to the workforce. Okay. And we look for women who are in the STEMS careers. Okay. AUW does promote a STEMS whole program. We recognize that women are underserved in that area. So we have a summer program for st- rising students that are coming into eighth grade that we pull into Stockton University for one um, week. Okay. And um, it's supported by all of the 18 branches in the state. So those are the kinds of things that we are doing. So scholarships across the board in all right. our branches and our STEMS program. You are so passionate. That just <laughs> that just rolled off your tongue like 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 
easy. So my question to you, I know you are a retired school technology coordinator. Um, And I feel obviously I could tell the way you're speaking, your former teacher of some sort. (laughs) What is driving this passion to be part of this AAUW for you? For me, um, let me say two, 24, five, five years ago when I was still teaching, I was looking for grants Mm -hmm. for girls in technology. And I was looking for grants and scholarships for women. And I went online because I could do that and searched. And the AAUW is the largest women's organization providing grants, scholarships, and funding to women. Wonderful. So we are all, so that impressed me that they were doing all that. I applied for a grant for the program that I was doing with my school, but also looked at all the grants and um, scholarships and fellowships that they have out there for for women to advance their careers, and that impressed me. So that my issues most of the time were with women's issues. So that was an impressive thing, and that's why I'm passionate about this. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the projects that? under your 25 years at AAUW that you've helped fund or programs that you've brought to fruition? We have, um, here in Burlington County, because we have always had our scholarship program with RCBC, sure. contacting with them. We have, um, all, we also have had a, um, a stamp program. So last year we did a stamp presence dedication um, for Constance Baker Motley, who was the first African American federal judge mm-hmm. in the Burlington County, we we recognized her as a leader and a pioneer in her area. So we provided a, a, um, a stamp presentation. And one of the things that we also did that was a piggyback off what we did at the state level. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg also had a stamp issued for her from the U.S. Postal Service last year. And we partnered with Rutgers University and provided a um, stamp dedication in Rutgers in Newark. And people say, well, why did you do it in Newark? (sighs) And this is why, because Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, was a professor there for nine years. Yes, I know. And a lot of people did not know that, and they didn't know why she was a professor there. She was a professor there because when she came out of college, the inequity, which is what we're, we're trying to do, was not present. She could not get a position in a law firm because she was a woman and she was Jewish. Mm-hmm. So therefore, she became a college professor. So we wanted to recognize that that particular person and her stamp when it came out. So we partnered at Rutgers to do that. Constance Baker Motley, we partnered down here in Burlington to do that presentation. Um, we have also done book um, and author luncheons with, with authors who have books on gender equity and things that advance women. One of our members now just wrote a book. She was a forensics investigator, and she wrote a book on the inaccuracies and the things that happen to women in that profession, because there's not that many women in that profession. Um, Interesting. So what do you, what would you say right now are, we're facing in the landscape of, of, of with women and jobs? And I know you said a lot about gender equity. What, what do you think our biggest fight is now as women? Pay equity. Um, in terms of us getting this, the, the same pay that men's are getting in the same professions that we are in. AUW has a lot of um, programs that deal with workshops on how to get pay equity, how to get your, your salary that you're deserving. So we have two or three different programs, Work Smart mm-hmm. um, and Money Smart, that we do for women to help them, help them with that. Um, that is a big thing issue. One of the other issues that we um, were promoting and we did this year, and I forgot about it to now, was That's okay. we helped um, the bill that went through the, the um, state legislation to provide menstrual products in the high schools free in the women's bathrooms. Mm. So um, that was last um, October. It was passed. It went into effect this September in all schools. So what we are now doing here in Burlington County is going in to see, did those schools put that in? One of the things that we had, um, we put into the bill is that it was paid for by the state as opposed to the state budget. Our schools, not state budget, it's a school budget, budget because right. a lot of schools, we got a kickback that says we don't have any money for that. So that was an equity issue 
Because just like we provide toilet paper in the bathroom, we provide soap, we need to provide menstrual products free of charge in the bathrooms. And I do notice that this college does have it in the bathrooms, even though it's not mandated in the college. This school has has that in the bathrooms. Well, I'm women. sure that's kudos to you mm-hmm. yes. and your and your foundation. So interesting that you were saying about passing bills and 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 pay equity and things like that. Um, I'm going to segue this into your League of Women Voters hat for a little bit. Tell me about why you felt that like the AAUW role and then you kind of being involved in the League of Women Voters, how that kind of morphs together and and what you bring to the table there at the League of Women Voters. So the the League of Women Voters, another group that I I joined because I was interested in making sure that people – um, first of all, vote, but that they're educated on the issues that they're voting for. Because a lot of people say, I don't know what the issues are. So that was something that, that sparked me to come in there, that they're not just registering people, they're educating people on what the issues are and what they're supposed to be doing um, in, the edu- in this process. And um, the League of Women Voters provides educational workshops. They also provide um, forums, which are the candidates' forums, to have the, them come out and speak. And I am a forum moderator in training right now, but um, we get to go out and talk to the legislators about our issues, what things that are that we are concerned about. Not just women's issues. We're concerned about the um, the economy. We're also concerned about the environment. So we, when we go out to talk to legislators, we always talk about all the issues that we have. The League of Women Voters, because a lot of people think we only do voting, the League of Women Voters has a panel of issues that we're concerned about in our communities, and we do speak to legislators about that. We do advocate in the state legislature and the, the um, capital. So and what do you a, think the biggest thing in Burlington County is that you're advocating for? The book banning. We did a, um, some av- advocacy on book banning and, and, and those kind of issues in the local area in Burlington County. So, yeah, that's something that we did do. So share with me, you know, you, you had said that you are uh, passionate about highlighting the accomplishments of African-American scientists and inventors. Is that from your educational hat? And now you're, I know you spoke about your passion about women joining STEM careers. Is that how you kind of collaborated and, and, and then built this like, you know, professional space for yourself? Yes, that's, that's where it came from. I was, when I was in school, we were always talking about um, inventors because technology, science, um, and all mm-hmm. the different fields. So I used to do things with the students and tell them about who invented something, not just African-Americans, but women and men. And the kids were like, oh, I didn't know. So um, that out of that led to let me present something that I now can go out and speak about in terms of inventors. And then it led to me creating um, it's an African-American Inventors Museum, which is a traveling group presentation that I go out and do. I have also partnered with... Um, 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 an, another group in North Jersey who c- do the same kind of thing, but they also have a building and um, the Black Inventors Hall of Fame, and they will be coming into, I'm partnering with them to bring them as a presentations to South Jersey so that they can, so that we can introduce this in, the, in this area also. So, so how do young women get involved in AAUW to, to create a change, to have a voice, to, to, to find other voices to, to, to help lift them up? How do they get involved? So it's a membership-based pro, um, organization, and they can join any of the local branches. And, and because we know people like to be all around, some people don't like to join branches that they have to come to meetings for. We have, in the state of New Jersey, a virtual branch which you join, and if you don't want to be in the virtual branch that are just coming together talking, you can just be a state um, member. So, And we keep all of these um, branches, the virtual branch and the state members, um, involved in what's going on in the state with our state newsletter that comes out and our website that we introduce things to. So we are looking for women who want to advance that, um, to advance equity. And we were looking for women who want to educate other women about what's going on for women. And we're looking for women who um, want to advance their careers. And that's everyone who has, who's coming out either in 
high school going into college or leaving college going into the workplace? So it says with the AAUW, make a powerful voice. Some of the things that are affecting women help break down barriers, interact with like-minded people, Mm -hmm. impact your community, network and learn from other people, share common interests in social groups, make career connections, exercise your mind. What are the top ones out of that list that resonate with you of what being a part of the AAUW has meant to you? For me, it's, it's, um, meeting other women with like minds that have things that, that I have issues on so that when we talk about um, the issues and, and the equities of women and an example is we're doing a, a program on, on um, hate on different women who have had hate issues that have come out in their lives um, and how it has affected them. So I like the conversations and the programs that we offer to the community. Um, that's speaking about our, our hate and our racism that's going on with us. That's coming out in October. We have, and that's part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion program that we do. Um, and we also have another program in November that's coming out that's about inequities and disparities and sexual harassment and things that happen to women veterans. And a lot of people do not know that um, we have a lot of women veterans that are homeless. So all of those issues are women's issues because they're issues that affect us as women, and we need to talk about those. So we provide those those kind of issue-based programs to the community, and that's, I like those kind of things that we do. I think it's amazing. I don't think a lot of people know that you have all these, they have all these wonderful be like buckets of knowledge yeah like waiting there for them. Right. Um, and you're, you're in these two really amazing groups. I mean, these are like powerful groups in, in Burlington County and, and thank you for helping make a change here in Burlington County. It's absolutely mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. When we were talking, I write down a whole bunch of words, um, while we're talking that I think are powerful words and I just want to read them to you right now. So we have leadership, evolve, advocacy, scholarship, mm-hmm. STEM, technology, women, pioneer, um, pay equity, conversations, like-minded, DEI, landscape. Those are just some words that kind of resonated with me. Mm-hmm. Out of those words, if you were to pick a hashtag to kind of make this whole uh, discussion and, and your career with AAUW and your American Le- Women League voters... What would that hashtag be? I think by diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, that would be more of my hashtag. I'm, I'm about how to create those places where everyone feels comfortable, everyone feels wanted, everyone belongs. And I think that that's what I, I, I look at across all of my, my platforms. You know, it, also with like the NAACP doing that kind of all of that work, everything is inclusive. So that people feel that they're included, that they feel that it's equitable, that they feel that they have a seat at the table, not just a seat at the table, they're heard at the table and and their opinion is respected. So in all of my programs, that is what I look for to to do. So tell our listeners how they can find out about the AAUW and the American um, Women's League of Voters. So AAUW has a website. You can go to aaunj.org and join our branches. You can see our branches. You can see all the things that we do and um, what branches are close to you that you are interested in being a part of our branches or just being a part of the organization. That's fine, too. Um, the League of Women Voters also has a website. It's lwvburl at um, dot org. Um, and it also lists all the activities and events that we are doing and coming up with. If we're meeting with a legislator, you would go online and see what legislator we're you're meeting with. If we're coming together to talk to an author about voting and how they vote, you'll see all of our events and planning. Everyone is always welcome to come to our meetings. Um, and we meet at the Burlington County Library for the AEUW, the League of Women Voters. We meet um, online a lot of times, so this, they're virtual. The NAACP, we meet in Mount Holly, and um, 
Let me see who else I... Um, I was going to say, what else are you adding to that? Oh How do you have goodness. any time during the week to go to anything else? <laughs> I tell people, I, you know, people say, oh, you are doing so much. The um, In fact, that is an uh, organization that I'm at, they're, they will be doing like a Kwanzaa program in, in December. We have done um, a taste of two um, cultures where you have two restaurant from some two different cultures come in and do presentations to people. So you get to learn about something. That's the that diversity and inclusion kind of thing. So people often say, how do you have time to do all this stuff? Well, I was a teacher. I um, live in South Jersey, and I worked in North Jersey. And I did a, a commute of an hour and a half each way. On Fridays, because of traffic, it was two hours. So now I don't have that to do. And that... in that opened up me to be able to do all these other things that I, they were waiting for, for me to do. So I'm, I'm excited that I'm in all the, the organizations that I'm in, you know, um, and, I, on this, and I'm excited that I have my own, you know, program, I have my own business, but I also have the nonprofit that does the, um, the museum. So all of those things kind of like fit in together with diversity, equity, and inclusion because we want everyone to know um, that we're all here and we all can be respected. I was very excited <coughs> when you when you said yes to being here today. And we want to thank you so much for joining us here at the Baroness Podcast. Thank you, Sharon, for joining us. And you have been listening to the Baroness Podcast here at RCBC. Take care. Thanks. You've been listening to the RCBC Baroness Podcast, which highlights women in leadership while encouraging listeners to build their skills, connect with the community, and visualize the opportunities available to women in various professions. For more information about this podcast or other podcasts available on the RCBC Podcast Network, visit rcbc.edu slash podcast. And be sure to subscribe to the RCBC Baroness Podcast available on all streaming platforms.